Okay, this is McGraw-Hill, Chapter 5, Section 1, Rational Expressions and Functions. Uh, one of the most important techniques or methods you're going to have to use for this whole chapter is factoring for your five factoring rules and dealing with exponent rules as well. First thing is finding the domain of a rational function or a rational expression. All right, the first thing we do is we're not concerned with the numerator. Numerator is no problem. Only concerned with the denominator. And we have to ask ourselves two questions. Is there a square root? And if there's a square root, then we have to set the square root greater than or equal to zero, and that'll be our domain. We don't have a square root, so we don't have to worry about it. Then we take the factors that are in the denominator, set them equal to zero, and solve. This tells us the value that x cannot be because it will give us zero in the bottom of a fraction which will make it undefined. So our domain for this particular rational expression, and remember rational expression is just another name for fractions with variables. So our domain here is all real numbers except for 3. How do we represent that in interval notation? We come from negative infinity, go to 3 with a parentheses. Union, leave three parentheses and go to positive infinity. This tells us that it's all real numbers except for three. In example two, we have two. Write the domain. We have f of x equals x plus four over two x squared minus 11 x plus five. First thing we have to do is factor the bottom, the denominator. We get two x minus one times x minus five. No square root, so we don't have to worry about that. Set each factor equal to 0. 2x minus 1 equals 0 becomes x equals 1 half. x minus 5 equals 0 becomes x equals 5. And so what happens here is we're coming from, so it can be all real numbers except for 1 half and 5. The way we write that, come from negative infinity, go to 1 half parentheses, union. Leave 1 half parentheses, go to 5 parentheses, union. Leave 5 parentheses and go to positive infinity. This says right here in interval notation, all real numbers except for 1 half and 5. The second one in example 2 says x over x squared plus 4. Well, let's ask our questions. Do we have a square root? No. Do we have a factor? The answer is no. Not a real number factor. See, the fact that this is squared, no matter what we put in for x, is going to make it positive. The fact that this is plus is going to make the whole bottom positive. So this is all real numbers. This is coming from negative infinity to infinity. x squared plus 4 cannot be factored. If there were a minus sign here, it would be a difference of squares and can be factored. There's no such thing as a sum of squares. Go to example 3. We've got to simplify rational expressions. And again, this is by factoring. So if you look at the top, we've got 2x cubed plus 12x squared plus 16x. The denominator is 6x plus 24. First thing we can do is on the top, we can do greatest common factor. So we can pull a 2x out. If we pull 2x out of here, it leaves us x squared. If we pull a 2x out of here, it leaves us 6x. If we pull a 2x out of here, it leaves us 8. This right here is a trinomial, which can be factored into x plus 2 times x plus 4. The bottom, we can do greatest common factor, factor out of 6, and we get 6 times x plus 4. The x plus 4 become 1. The 6 can become 2 times 3, which the 2's become 1. So we end up with x times x plus 2 over 3. So in this one problem, you're using your greatest common factor technique. You're using your trinomial factoring technique, and then you're looking to see what you can cancel. Remember again, once we get in factored form, all we're doing is looking for the same term on the top and the bottom because it becomes 1. It doesn't cancel, it becomes 1. Example 4. Here's example 4. It says simplify 2x squared y to the 8 over 8x to the 4, y to the 3rd. What I did was I broke it down so you could understand it. So I rewrote 2x squared y to the 8th as 2 times x times x, which is the x squared, times y times y times y times y to the 5th. If we had 1, 2, 3, and 5, we get 8. I broke the bottom down to 2 times 4, which is 8. 
times x times x times x squared. 1 plus 1 plus 2 is x to the fourth. And then y times y times y. The reason I did that is to get the same top and bottom. So see the 2's cancel, or not cancel, but become 1. These x's become 1. These x's become 1. These y's and these y's and these y's become 1. What am I left with? I'm left with y to the fifth on, on the numerator and 4 times x squared on the denominator. Now, that's a long way of representing it. Remember, when we talked about exponent rules, the easiest way to look at it is I have an x on, you know, I can reduce 2 over 8 to 4 on the bottom. But if I look at my variables one at a time, don't look at the y's, look at the x's. So I have two x's on the top, four x's on the bottom. Subtract the smaller amount of x's from the top and bottom. So if I take two x's from two x's, I have no x's. If I take two x's from four x's, I have two x's on the bottom. Same thing with y. See, I have eight y's on the top, three y's on the bottom. Take the smallest, take three y's from the bottom, got no y's, take three y's from the top. I got y to the fifth on top in the numerator. Example six. Now this is an important technique to, to remember too. Here I have x minus five over 25 minus x squared. Okay, so this is a difference of squares, but if I were to factor it, I get five minus x, five plus x, which isn't gonna help me because I need the variable in the front. So we do a simple little technique we're going to multiply this whole thing right here by a negative, negative 1. If I multiply the 25 by a negative, I get minus 25. If I multiply the minus x squared by a negative, I get x squared. Now, i got to keep negative throughout the whole problem. Now, it becomes x squared minus 25, which is a difference of squares. So, now it becomes negative. x minus 5 times x plus 5. I have an x minus 5 in the numerator and x minus 5 in the denominator. That becomes 1. And remember, if everything cancels on top, it's not 0, it's 1. x minus 5 divided by x minus 5 is 1. So this becomes 1 over negative x minus 5. And you don't have to distribute the negative for me. You can leave it just like this in factored form.